We, the members of the Concord Fortress of Hope Church, trust and believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. We are commissioned to teach and preach Christ to the hurting, needy, and disenfranchised in the Ruskin-Hickman Mills area and its surrounding communities and are committed to raising the spiritual and physical standards of living of all we touch through the power of the Holy Spirit, trusting in the Lord with all our hearts and all our ways acknowledging Him as He directs our paths.
Good morning. Hope you're enjoying worship. Today we're going to start a two-part series, uh, and it really hits at the heart of where we are uh, as a community and individuals, especially those of us who are people of faith. Uh, it is how do we find happiness during this time? Because we seem to be struggling with it. I know that uh, I'm running into relationships with people uh, and not only relationships with people, but even internally, uh, uh, all those conflicts about the moment, the time, what the government's doing and what's going on in life in general. And so I think I think it behooves us to really have a conversation about how do we embrace happiness in this moment. And I think Psalms uh, 30, 32 really explains it. And we're going to break this down into two parts. Today, we're going to deal with the first five verses. And then next week, we'll deal with the sixth through the 11th, which is the end of of this very brief uh, chapter. And it reads like this. Blessed is the one who transgressions are forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man against whom the Lord counts no iniquity and in whose spirit there is no deceit. For when I kept silent, my bones wasted away through my groanings all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy on me. My strength was dried up as by the heat of summer. I acknowledge my sin to you and I did not cover and I did not cover my iniquity. I said, I'll confess my transgressions to the Lord and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. This text really is interesting for a lot of different reasons. It is really a continuation of David's conversation or David sharing the brutal experience of what he experienced uh, uh, with his relationship with Bathsheba. He uses this text to really talk about how he came to a place where he was at peace and where he began to trust God in a fresh and real way. So when the text says, um, and when uh, David says, Blessed is the one who trans, uh, whose transgressions are forgiven. He is literally saying this transgressions. And we've shared this before that transgressions are are blessed. Literally translates in the new and Old Testament into the word happy because David wants us to know that he was in pursuit of being happy. He was in pursuit of a Full and rich life. I, I looked up um, uh, um, on Google. Uh, I just wanted to see if I put in how to be happy, what would come up. And when I put it in, get this. Almost 89 million references to people wanting and desiring to be happy came up. Let's be honest with each other, brothers and sisters. All of us want to be happy. All of us want to be at peace. That Google search suggests to us that. That. Hundreds of millions and hundreds of thousands of people really have an empty spot. An empty place, a vacuum in them that they're looking for happiness. That's why this text is so important, brothers and sisters, because David is just like you and I, because he has a vacuum within him. David is sharing uh, the virtues of what it really means to become happy, to be in the process of becoming happy. David shares this idea that 
I need to be fulfilled in my life. So when David starts it off and he says, blessed is the one whose transgressions are forgiven. He literally is saying those that recognize that God can forgive. Not only the fact that God can forgive, but then that God in his forgiveness satisfies. You know, we keep trying to find satisfaction uh, through all kinds of means right now. You know, uh, uh, whether it be Facebook, whether it be TikTok, whether it be some other social media, whether it be uh, all these other uh, relationships, uh, uh, but those things will only give a temporary high. They won't really fix what's broken in you because what's really broken, broken in you is something that you have no control over, that I have no control over. And it's this truth, brothers and sisters, that all of us are born in sin and shaped in iniquity. That we are unhappy because we are born separated from God. I know that sounds strange to some people, but because of the very nature of what it means to be human, that we are born, we are children of sorrow. We are children born with a void in us that only God can feel that, that because our parents were sinners, and because our grandparents were sinners, I don't care how amazing and how godly your grandmother is. She was born in sin and shaped in iniquity. In other words, brothers and sisters, that we are born with a vacuum that sin has created this void in us. And there's no righteousness in us. There's nothing in us because the sin of man so, so impacted all of humanity that even those gorgeous children that we have, that we know God's hands were on and he made them and he used us and we made these amazing children, we soon find out that there is a vacuum in them as well. So don't think, don't think, brothers and sisters, that you're the only one that feels lonely, that you're the only one who feels this void. No, brothers and sisters, all of us have this uh, emptiness in us that only God can feel. And only God can satisfy those hungers and that pain that is in us. So here, uh, when David talks about uh, blessed is the one whose transgressions. Transgressions are willful acts, are willful acts of really standing against the principles and the things of God. It's when it's when we it's when we by an act of the will, uh, an act of our own personal desires, knowing that things are wrong, that we do them anyway, because. We just want to. He says, blessed, blessed is the one whose transgressions are forgiven. But not only does he say blessed is the one whose transgressions are forgiven. He says, blessed is the one whose sin is covered. Get that. Get that. He starts out this whole conversation about what being blessed is and what being happy is because if we have this void, because we have a fractured relationship with God, then we also can find peace and rest in knowing that we are rebuilding and have rebuilt the relationship with God. That's why he says this, brothers and sisters. That's why he said, says that blessed is he whose transgressions are what? Forgiven. In other words, that we have come before God and we have asked God into our lives and asked God to forgive us of 
our willful acts. Get that. Our willful acts. Brothers and sisters, whenever you hear someone who says that they've never done something willfully against the person of God, they're lying because all of us, all of us, all of us have intentionally made decisions that did not honor God. And so David says, man, I, when I got that thing right, when I got the willful act, if once I got that issue straightened out, then everything began to work out for me. He says, not only that, he says, but, but that God also covers his sin. That God not only forgives his willful acts, but now God covers all of his sins. That's why the work of Jesus is so important, brothers and sisters. Because not, not only does God address those things that we don't know about, or that we unwillingly do. But now he addresses those things that we willfully do as well. Every one of us, every one of us struggle with the issues of sin and iniquity. Matter of fact, in Isaiah 59, it says, Behold, the Lord, uh, the Lord's hand is not shortened, that it cannot save. Or his ears so dull, so that he cannot hear. But your, but your iniquities have made a separation between you and God because of your sins. Brothers and sisters, but once we begin to really believe and trust that it's only in God who can forgive us, it's only in God that we can find rest. And when we begin to build and rebuild relationships with him because of the moments that we find ourselves in. And I believe because I've stated before that this is a God moment that we're in. But being that it is a God moment, how many times that in this moment that we have sought our own ways because of politics, because of people, because of relationships, because we believe that we can determine what will cure the fate of humanity when the truth of the matter is because we're all the same. Only God, only God can forgive us of those. That does not mean that we ought not be on the forefront. Matter of fact, it suggests that we ought to be on the forefront. We ought to be in the battles. We ought to be in the fights. We ought to be standing up for the oppressed. We ought to be standing up for the hurting. But if you think just standing up for hurting people is going to cure what's broken in you. Oh, my friend, you are sadly mistaken. You're sadly mistaken. <coughs> because these people struggle with the same things you struggle with. <coughs> they struggle with the same things that you struggle with. So never think that Filling the gaps in your life with things are going to be enough. That's why music is wonderful. I love music. I don't just love gospel. I just love music. And I listen to all kinds of music from uh, Beethoven, Bach to uh, Jester Hairston, uh, Gospels, uh, Moses Hogan to... Uh, Peebo Bryson to you name it, I listen to it. But I found this out that music by itself won't feel the gaps of what's broken in me. Only God and only a real relationship through the work of Jesus fulfills and fills that gap. That is in us. Because brothers and sisters, at the end of the day, sin does one thing and one thing alone. Get this. Write this down. Sin does not. Sin never builds relationships. Sin only breaks relationships. Get that. 
not only with people, but with God. Not, not just the rituals of doing things around religion, but really fostering a growing and healthy relationship with God. Never think that things are going to satisfy. Man, I love some of the things that God has allowed me to do and what he is allowing me to do in this new age in American history and in global history. And I love what he's allowing me to be a part of. What happens if and when all of that goes away? Brothers and sisters, only your relationship with God will last. Only your relationship with God can fill the vacuum that is there. That's why, brothers and sisters, these first two verses really are digging in. David just really digs into this issue of God covering him, that God protected him, that in the midst of everything that God was still there. Then look at what else it says in verse three. Note what he says in verse three. Verse three is a powerful and interesting verse. And it says, for when I kept silent, my bones wasted away. Get that, he says, when I kept silent, he said, he, what he's talking about here, brothers and sisters, is when I let my transgressions have their way, when my own personal will drove the agenda in my life and I was not listening to God. He said, when, and he said, when I kept silent, he said this, my bones wasted away. Get this, this, this is crazy, this is wonderful. And, 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 and it, explain some things why the book of James talks about when we have illness among us let's call the elders and pray because there are some impacts of sin that are not just spiritual but they're physical as well have you ever seen people who just run the streets and you look at them and they look aged their bodies break down early day. It's not always the case, not always the case. But so many times when we look at people who have embraced the life in the streets, not only do they look older, but their bodies so many times are breaking down around them. David was literally saying this, that when I was silent, when I didn't bring my sins before you, it had, it took a physical toll on me. Brothers and sisters, because sin takes a, has a physical impact on us so many times. Don't miss that. Don't miss that. Please don't miss that. I'm not saying that it's always the case. That's not always the case. But, and so you also have to be careful of this is, Reading in that if people do get sick, that it's because of sin. It's the same uh, a quandary that uh, Job's friends fell into that said, Job, you must have done something for this manner of evil and sickness to fall upon you. No, 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 no. Be careful. Be careful not to every time you see someone who is sick to believe that it is a byproduct of their behaviors. But brothers and sisters, many times, many times, there are times when I should say that because of our lifestyles, that it does have mm, 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 an impact on us physically. Brothers and sisters, this is a wonderful word. It ought to be an encouragement to all of us that the decisions that we make have a fallout spiritually and physically. Physically, spiritually, and emotionally. Our body, our mind, 
And so lately we've been talking about, quite often talking about our souls. The soul is the seat of our intellect. Our spirit is that which communes directly with God. And then our bodies, the, the tool that we use to operate in to God's glory. An unrepentant sin will always have an effect on our lives. So when David says uh, that for when I kept silent, my bones wasted away. <laughs> Through my groaning all day long. In other words, he wept. He lamented the decisions that he made that brought him to this place. Brothers and sisters, this issue of repenting is so important. This issue of being able to move beyond our brokenness is vital not only to our spiritual health, but to our physical health. Because it's not just forgiveness alone that matters, brothers and sisters. It is being healthy and learning to be healthy as God cleanses us. Look at verse verse four. It says. For day and night, your hands. Uh, were heavy upon me when he says this, brothers and sisters, he is saying. That God, you constantly pressed me, even as I was making decisions and I was groaning and in misery over what was happening to me spiritually and physically. You kept pressing me. You kept pressing me. You kept pressing me. You kept pressing on me. Oh, isn't it good, beloved, to know that God. As we're attempting to walk away from him, that he's always pressing us. That he's always speaking to us. Oh, beloved, you know what I'm talking about. That you decided that you're going to make other decisions and you decide to walk away from the God that has brought you thus far. But he keeps pressing you. He keeps speaking to you. The iniquity in you where you continue to make the decision to do something else doesn't mean that God is not pressing on you, speaking to you, because God never leaves us nor forsakes us in the sense he's always trying to speak to us. Well, not only does he say that, he says, that I've grown so weary. Look at what it says in verse four. This is powerful. He says, my strength was dried up as by the heat of summer. In other words, God was pressing on him, but he had no strength to even fight anymore. He felt as though he had no strength to even fight. That's why brothers and sisters, be careful and choose what fights to fight and what fights not to fight. Choose what to go after and what not to go after. Be careful how you choose what to go after and what not to go after. David says that God kept pressing on me and my body fell into pain and my mind fell into pain and all I could do was weep and moan. And I felt like I had no strength to go on. Ah, friend, have you ever felt like and are you feeling like that you have no strength to go on? God wants you to know. God wants you to know. God really wants you to know that you don't have to have the strength. 
He is the strength. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling. That the Lord is, the, is our light and our salvation. Whom shall we fear? Whom shall we be afraid? Even when our enemies come against us. When you have no strength, know that God will be your strength. Last verse and we're done. Verse five, he says, when I had no strength, I finally acknowledge in verse five, my sin to you. And I did not cover my iniquity. He says, listen. When I came to myself, I wasn't worried about hiding anything from you, God. I brought it all to your feet. You know, sometimes we, we really do try to hide things from God, even in our prayer life. But he knows it all. And when you have no strength, that's when you need to call on him. That's when you need, oh my goodness, to anchor yourself at the feet of Jesus. That's when you need to give it all to him and confess your sins, knowing that he's faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us of our unrighteousness. He will leave no stone unturned, therefore you leave no stone unturned. Be willing to come to him. Then he says, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord. And you forgave the iniquity of my sin. Then it says, Selah. In other words, David is saying, I pondered deep within me and I brought it all before God. I brought my iniquities. I brought my transgressions. I brought it all and I gave it to God. Friend, when was the last time you gave it all to God? If you really want happiness, if you really are seeking for happiness, Stop trying to carry the baggage that others created and that you created that prevent you from experience, from experiencing happiness and the fullness and the richness of what God wants your life to be. God bless you. Our in Concord is that portion of the service where we're able to give back to God what he first gave to us. So please get your offering ready. And remember, it's a multitude of ways that you can give. You can give physically by mailing in a check uh, to P.O. Box 9781, Kansas City, Missouri. And of course, Concord Fortress of Hope Church. You also can text in your offering and you even can give it online at c4hope.org. And also Cash App. A lot of you guys asked for that and we heard you and we did it. So you can get through Cash App as well. But whatever way you give, do it with a cheerful heart. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, thank you so much for blessing us. Uh, thank you for being here for us. Thank you for providing for us, God. You've given us everything we need, God. Clothes on our back, food on our table, air in our lungs, God. You've been good to us. So I pray that you would take this offering and use it to build your kingdom, Father, and your kingdom of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a blessed week, Concord, and we'll see you next time.